Good afternoon, everyone. We have finally reached the final session of the East Asia Forum 2022, Deepening Partnerships. I am pleased to introduce the session chair, Ms. Akiko Terada Hagiwara, Principal Economist, East Asia Department of the Asian Development Bank. Akiko, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Doti. Very good, good day to all. Uh, thank you so much for staying until the closing session. So in this closing session, we like to turn our attention to think about how best we can move forward with all the fruitful discussions and useful suggestions we have had over the past two days. If you recall, as in the Vice President Said said at the opening, um, we believe that the decarbonization efforts has to be pursued through strong partnerships with all key stakeholders. This has to be a collective effort, not just one country, nor one institution, or one department in this institution can achieve the goal to promote the transfer of useful experiences and lessons across ADB's member countries in key development areas, not just decarbonization. At ADB, um, East Asia Department launched a um, working group to consolidate the efforts to promote knowledge transfers across departments and regions. Um, it is called One ADB Knowledge Working Group, or OKWG for short. Please watch a video to learn more about this group. Right? As developing member countries, or DMCs, approach middle income status, ADB's engagement will pivot increasingly towards providing knowledge supported by partnerships. The One ADB Knowledge Working Group, or OKWG, will support this initiative. Through this, we can share development experiences, best practices, and innovation that benefit ADB's DMCs. that the working group interact with each other and sharing as to what the individual department can share as good practice and also exchange ideas about our DMSC's needs which they wish to learn from other departments. We really thank the East Asia department's lead for this initiative and I do find there's a lot of interest to learn from East Asian experience including Korea and Japan. Thank you. As um, Director General of South Asia Department was referring to, um, there is a high demand for learning from experiences, whether from its own experiences or from other cities or other countries. So in this session, we will hear from distinguished panelists about how this matching of demand and supply of um, existing knowledge can be promoted. But before we give a floor to them, um, we shall pause for a moment to take a photo. Um, please open our cameras and look at the camera and smile for around 10 seconds. Uh, 
Uh, Teresa, please join as well. We are good, thank you. Thank you so much. So please, uh, panelists, stay on um, on the screen. So let me now introduce um, three panelists for this session. Um, we have three of them. One is from ADBI, um, South Asia Region, Region Department, and our own East Asia Department. Uh, Peter Morgan is from ADBI, Senior Consulting Economist and Advisor to the Dean. Welcome, Peter. And next panelist is um, Don Shan Lee. Uh, he's a lead uh, regional cooperation specialist uh, of uh, regional cooperation and operations coordination divisions of South Asia Department. Welcome, Don Shan. And Mr. Saftar Parvez is an advisor from East Asia Department. Thank you, Safta, for joining us. So um, uh, in this uh, panel discussion, um, you know, we know that there is a demand and there is also a supply of knowledge. So the discussion has to be how to match these two, um, which is not as easy as you might think. So we want to ask panelists to share their thoughts on this, uh, specifically, let's say, um, Number one, considering how ADB works and ADB and ADBI work together, how best can we work together really on this topic? And also how your department or ADBI can support the cross learning. And finally, would you have any specific areas that we can act on on this area? These three may be interrelated, but um, uh, I know all of you have a um, leading role in knowledge manage management in your own function. And um, let me um, give a floor to Peter first. Um, please um, limit your response within three to four minutes. Thank you, Peter. Thanks very much, Akiko. Uh, I'm delighted to, to participate in this uh, uh, panel. This, and the, uh, talk on this very important uh, topic. Um, of course, the uh, um, the issue of how to coordinate information amongst uh, ADB's various uh, uh, departments and ADBI has been a, a, a kind of a long-standing uh, uh, debate, and I think there's been quite a, a significant uh, uh, improvement in that situation over time. There's been a, a much more communication with different departments. Uh, Especially uh, uh, the the, uh, the knowledge departments, but also we've been trying to to establish more uh, regular uh, uh, communication and uh, establish focal points with the the various operational departments too. So so I think it's basically moving in the right uh, 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 direction. Probably uh, we should be doing it on a on a more regular basis. I think that. Uh, uh, there was a good move to uh, establish more regular communication a, a couple of years ago, and then it sort of got hit by the uh, the pandemic, uh, and everybody was kind of scrambling to to do uh, uh, crisis management. So that uh, uh, I think that effort uh, should be restarted, uh, and and I would look to the the, the uh, overall knowledge management department to uh, uh, kind of guide that process. Uh, I think we need uh, uh, some more retreats, that kind of thing. But uh, 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 regular communication is the key. Now, uh, in, in terms of uh, uh, meeting outside demands, uh, ADBI can certainly leverage its own contacts with the various governments. Uh, uh, we have our own direct contacts, for example, uh, uh, perhaps more on the financial side, for, for example, with uh, uh, central banks and, and financial regulators. But uh, that, of course, I think ties in a lot with uh, uh, issues connected with, with green finance, uh, for example, also financial stability. So we would be had, uh, quite happy to uh, 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 try to leverage those kinds of contacts. So let me stop there. Uh, thanks very much.
Thank you, Peter. Um, we, I took notes about the importance of regular communications. Um, and also you suggested to have maybe possibly to even have a retreat on this specific topic. Um, that might be a very good idea. Thank you, Peter. Um, let me now um, give a floor to uh, Don Shan. Um, being in South Asia department, uh, another regional department, um, how do you see this topic? Um, I would like to hear your views. Thank you, Don Shan. Over to you. Okay. Thank you, Akiko. Uh, first, I'm very happy to serve uh, as a member of the 1ADB Knowledge Working Group and uh, participate uh, in the panel discussion this afternoon. Uh, please first let me thank the East Asia Department for initiating this uh, working group. Uh, I believe this working group will complement all the existing initiatives and I further promote uh, systematic uh, knowledge sharing. I congratulate the launching uh, at this forum. Uh, the knowledge sharing among ADB's uh, departments and uh, the member country is very important because it can help avoid uh, similar uh, mistakes, uh, improve design and uh, implementation of ADB's uh, projects and enhance development uh, effectiveness and promote uh, South-South uh, knowledge cooperation uh, among other things. So to promote uh, cross-country knowledge sharing, I have a few um, uh, preliminary uh, ideas for, for discussion. Uh, first, I think we need to have a better understanding of the development challenge facing the region and also our DMCs. We need to be clear of the fundamental and also the urgent issues that need to be addressed by our client country, such as addressing uh, poverty and the inequality, environment and uh, climate change, uh, natural disasters, uh, communicable diseases, uh, governance, uh, aging, urbanization, human development, et cetera. So we need to know the demand uh, for the knowledge as well as the potential suppliers uh, of knowledge, including the strengths and uh, uh, comparative advantages of our knowledge partners, so that we can intermediate and uh, bridge uh, the gap. Uh, second, I would like to highlight the importance of source source uh, uh, knowledge cooperation. Of course, I must say that uh, to learn from a developed country is equally important. The reason why I stress the importance of uh, source source knowledge sharing here uh, is because developing countries usually face the same or similar uh, development challenge and issues. So uh, lessons and experience from uh, their peers might be more uh, relevant and e easier to learn and adapt to local context. As I understand that with the more countries are moving to upper middle income country status, uh, more knowledge have been accumulated and uh, the countries concerned are also willing to share them. Uh, third, when we talk about knowledge sharing, we will refer to some organization of uh, knowledge sharing event. Uh, here, I would also like to remind that uh, let's not forget the knowledge product. Uh, knowledge product can be developed after um, a knowledge sharing event. It can also be developed before a knowledge sharing event for discussion and uh, uh, dissemination at the event. ADB uh, departments and the member country can jointly develop a knowledge product, the process of which is a good way of learning itself. I recall that ADB developed a flagship knowledge product, uh, something called a, a dragon and the elephant a few years ago with the joint efforts of uh, East Asia department, uh, South Asia department, uh, and the PRC and uh, India, and also knowledge partners. I think maybe something can be explored also in the future. Uh, for knowledge sharing event, uh, we are realizing the uh, increasing importance of ICT. Based on my personal experience with the association and countries, I would like to mention the importance of a traditional face-to-face -face, uh, knowledge uh, sharing and also site visit, especially after over two years of uh, work from home due to the COVID-19 um, uh, pandemic. Uh, fourth, I would like to highlight the importance of knowledge sharing at a different levels, where much attention are being given to knowledge sharing at the policy level and the central decision making level, let's also attach importance to knowledge sharing at a lower levels, such as the provincial, municipal, grassroots, uh, even EAIA levels. Basically, you know, if uh, a policy and innovation are to be smoothly implemented and put into place in the field, the knowledge and the capacity of a lower level operating staff 
which is uh, usually weak because of lack of learning uh, opportunities, need to be further uh, strengthened. So this is uh, some basic uh, uh, <laughs> in the rough ideas for how to promoting knowledge sharing. Uh, shall I uh, talk about some uh, specific uh, activity now or later? Maybe you can come back to the specific activities later. Okay. Thank you, Don Shang. Um, you have highlighted a lot of key points. Um, I, I took a very good notes. Um, yes, it's important. South uh, South knowledge sharing is important. We need to avoid mistakes. Um, and uh, probably, as you said, it may be easier um, for adaptations uh, for the same level of uh, development stage. And Yet uh, understanding the needs for knowledge is very critical and important. And I hope that this uh, working group would help um, support this process of understanding the demand. And face-to-face, um, -face, yes, we hope we, we get back to that point as soon as possible. And um, yes, thank you so much uh, for this uh, very crucial point. And, uh, let me now turn the floor over to Safter. Um, so you are uh, playing a critical role in our department, uh, leading the knowledge work. Um, what would be your suggestions in this area? Over to you, Safter. Uh, Akiko, thank you very much. And let me first begin by subscribing fully to what Peter and uh, Dong Chong have mentioned in terms of some of the priorities uh, for uh, knowledge uh, exchange. Uh, and I think it is crucial for us to have partners like ADBI, the South Asia Department and other departments, uh, because it has to be a very collaborative effort. Uh, and I think that is why it is great that uh, in this one ADB knowledge group, we have been able to get the main partners together uh, in order to catalyze the generation and dissemination of, uh, of knowledge across borders. And in fact, uh, you know, I must say that as part of the East Asia Department to which I belong, this is one of our core mandates is to treat knowledge as a regional public good uh, and, uh, and, and, and really prioritize it in, our, in terms of our operational work. Uh, so one manifestation of, of this is this current East Asia Forum. I think over the past two days, we have heard a, a number of great ideas uh, for knowledge sharing. Uh, for example, on the need uh, for knowledge sharing on development of uh, long-term just transition strategies uh, for low carbon development. Uh, we heard about the potential uh, for knowledge exchange and sharing on uh, green finance, uh, the green climate bonds, uh, uh, and what are some lessons learned from more advanced markets such as Hong Kong uh, in that respect. Uh, today, we heard about the BTH uh, experience, uh, the, the Beijing uh, Tianjin Hebei air pollution uh, ma management uh, and, and, and how that has some lessons for other uh, member countries. So I think uh, it, it, so this is one way in which we are trying to promote knowledge sharing. Um, another one uh, for which we have a bit of a history now is the so-called Regional Knowledge Sharing Initiative, RKSI, uh, that has now been operational for about 12 years. Uh, 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 sorry, 10 years, and, uh, and, and one of the key purposes there is to exchange uh, uh, knowledge through uh, uh, Dong Chong, as you mentioned, physical visits, uh, you know, of, uh, of officials and, and uh, uh, you know, and, and, and other members from one country visiting another country, the PRC, for example, to learn about best practices on water management, agriculture development, etc. cetera. Uh, but now uh, with the COVID uh, uh, advent, uh, you know, that RKSI also went uh, uh, to a virtual platform and has been organizing uh, a number of uh, blogs, blogs, videos uh, to continue this knowledge sharing in a different format. Um, Coming back to this one ADB knowledge group, uh, I uh, see uh, uh, it to be a key enabler uh, for knowledge dissemination. Uh, uh, and in my personal view, it should focus on four or five, five key areas. The first is to ensure uh, the relevance of the knowledge that is being exchanged uh, so that, uh, as uh, Akiko, you mentioned, the demand and supply forces are matched. Uh, and in this respect, in this first point, uh, there was a key point made in the de deliberations today uh, that uh, country circumstances differ uh, from one another and uh, a whole scale importation of a certain design of a project that may uh, work very well in, in, in PRC, for example, uh, may not work as well uh, in a country like, uh, let's say, Bangladesh, 
unless adjustments are made given uh, the, the, the political economy uh, of the country, the institutional capacities and others. Uh, and uh, so this group uh, can bring together experts to ensure that the knowledge that is being disseminated or, or being exchanged is relevant or, rele or is ad adapted in a relevant manner uh, so as to maximize its utility uh, for the receiving country. That's one. I think the second point is that uh, this group can, can promote a high quality because, because without quality, I mean, people demand knowledge for its quality. If, if it's a low quality product, nobody really wants it. Uh, so how does this group really ensure uh, that quality standards, uh, high quality standards, for example, of the ADBI uh, and ADB itself are met? Uh, uh, you know, that's to me a second important area. And then, uh, you know, a third important area is really to identify key stakeholders on both sides, on the demand side, as well as on the supply side and bring them together. Uh, we need to know uh, who this uh, the, is, is, are the demanders of this knowledge, which agencies do they belong to, how can we bring together those agencies from various countries. And clearly, uh, sitting in the East Asia department, we have uh, our knowledge is not robust enough about other countries. And I think this is where uh, this group can again uh, 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 provide a lot of value added. The fourth point uh, I wanted to mention is that uh, this group should really also come up with innovative uh, uh, dissemination strategies, because having knowledge is one thing, but having uh, adequate means to share and disseminate that knowledge uh, in the virtual space in the physical space, uh, what new modalities can we can can we come up with in order to make such knowledge exchanges attractive uh, and of uh, greater utility uh, should be a core mandate uh, of this of this group. Uh, and finally, uh, you know, uh, this group should find ways of establishing good feedback mechanisms uh, uh, so that we can learn each time a knowledge event happens, uh, so that the next event following this event can be of greater use, learning from the experience of the previous knowledge exchanges, and to set up a kind of a monitoring and evaluation system uh, around some of these feedback mechanisms. So I think if my view, if, if this group, uh, uh, you know, uh, can create these kinds of uh, 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 factors into its uh, working mandate, uh, in my view, then, then we are setting up ourselves uh, for really catalyzing a much more effective uh, and a much more sustainable uh, knowledge exchange system uh, than the one that we have today. Uh, let me stop there. Thank you, Akiko. Thank you so much, Saftar, for that very, um, very thoughtful and specific suggestions, particularly for the working group to focus. Um, I think it, it's uh, important to be mindful that we have to focus on the specific areas that's, that's uh, impactful and identify key stakeholders uh, to work together. And, and also uh, your point about being innovative in, um, in uh, thinking about how to achieve this goal through various platforms. Uh, I think that's very important, uh, particularly in the current, in current um, circumstances. Um, so now um, I want to maybe um, go back to Donshan. Um, Safta already provided us specific uh, um, suggestions, um, but um, let me give a floor back to Donshan first, and then um, Peter and Safta, if you have uh, anything else to add on specific actions. Donshan, please. Okay, thank you very much, Hakiko. Yeah, uh, South Asia Department, you know, is uh, very keen to share knowledge with the uh, East Asia Department and also other uh, operational departments. And uh, our client country in South Asia are also very interested in sharing uh, development experience with other countries. Uh, we organized some knowledge sharing event in the recent years with uh, Japan, uh, Korea, and the PRC. Uh, we will explore more uh, after the pandemic. Uh, for this year, uh, we will explore the following uh, knowledge sharing uh, event, uh, which were planned actually for, uh, for 2020, but delayed uh, by the pandemic. Uh, we are checking with our uh, DMC uh, if they are still interested in these uh, topics and uh, uh, activities. Uh, if yes, we can resume in uh, 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 this year, 2022, if travel to PRC will be, will be possible and easier. Uh, the first one is uh, the workshop and uh, study tour by Indian official to PRC to learn PRC's uh, experience in water management. Uh, we plan to visit uh, Chengdu and uh, Beijing. 
the second one is a workshop and a study tour by South Asian countries uh, to PRC to learn PRC's uh, experience uh, on special economic zone and also a cross-border uh, economic zones. Uh, we plan to visit uh, Shanghai for this one. Our partner for this one is uh, AFDI, Asia Pacific Finance and uh, Development Institute. Uh, in addition to the uh, about two event, uh, based on our discussion with our arrest missions, uh, we may explore other potential areas for knowledge sharing with the uh, East Asia Department and also PRC. Uh, the first one is uh, learning from uh, East Asia Department uh, experience in supporting PRC's uh, uh, 12th and 13th five-year plan. And uh, the second uh, will be learning uh, how uh, East Asia Department move away from uh, single sector uh, projects towards a multi-sector and the integrated projects. Uh, and uh, we already hear something about the, the uh, Beijing Tianjin Hebei uh, air pollution project. We are very interested in it. Yeah. So basically this is uh, some rough idea for, for something that might be explored for, for this year. Yeah, thanks, Akiko. Uh, thank you, Doshan, for, for those uh, list of uh, things we could possibly pursue. This year, um, some of them I understand is subject to the travel restrictions, uh, how it might uh, develop uh, this year, but uh, um, we look forward to working closely with you on this one. Um, Peter, you like to add anything on any actionable items from ADBI side? Yes, well, I, I should mention, particularly on the issue of, of the demand for knowledge products, we recently carried out a survey of a number of uh, ADB stakeholders, uh, both uh, uh, government officials and, and then other stakeholders, such as uh, private companies and, and uh, think tanks. Uh, and this was based on a, more or less the same database as used in the uh, ADB corporate perceptions uh, survey. Uh, and we did find uh, get some interesting findings. Uh, one uh, topic that scored very highly was Digitalization. Uh, uh, this this uh, came up in a in a number of different uh, uh, operational priority areas, uh, and it, it does suggest there's a great deal of interest uh, interest in it. Uh, also, uh, generally issues of of governance uh, uh, did have uh, 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 quite high high popularity, and I think that's not surprising given all the the complexities that we've heard over the the, the past couple of days in implementing projects when you have to take into account uh, uh, national and regional uh, 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 local levels. So uh, so I think uh, that could be a very interesting resource going forward. Thank you so much. Uh, digitalization seems to be a very popular um, area as well. I, I also hear from other um, departments on this topic. Um, so Saftar, uh, would you like to add anything else? Uh, Akiko, yeah, not much. I just want to uh, really thank uh, Dongsheng uh, and Peter for coming up with very specific areas on which we can uh, build the edifice of our knowledge cooperation. Uh, I think these, uh, and I just want to assure them of our full cooperation. And uh, Peter, we would also like very much to make use of the database that you uh, mentioned, uh, uh, and we would love to have some access to it. Uh, but also, I think uh, I'd like to encourage all the other uh, regional departments, uh, 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 you know, uh, to uh, 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 to uh, uh, participate actively in the one in this one ADB knowledge group, uh, so that we can identify activities uh, and areas of knowledge generation and dissemination that are of mutual benefit uh, to all of our uh, uh, member countries. So thank you very much. So, thank you, Saftar. So we only have one or two minutes before uh, um, we ha I hand it over to DG. Um, there are a few questions from the floor. Maybe uh, I pick one on, there was a question about uh, role of RKSI, what specific role that RKSI is playing vis -a -vis in the entire picture of uh, knowledge activities. Uh, may I ask, after to coming on this? Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, you know, uh, uh, RKSI has got uh, a website and uh, we can uh, also refer you to that for more details. Uh, but, you know, RKSI uh, uh, started off uh, you know, as a forum uh, uh, to basically uh, 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 ensure uh, knowledge exchanges uh, by uh, having groups of officials 
of different countries coming up and visiting PRC uh, and, and other countries uh, in order to uh, uh, you know, promote knowledge exchange on, on topical issues. Uh, so uh, RKSI in general is not a knowledge generation forum. It is much more of a dissemination uh, a forum. And the idea really is to try to bring parties together uh, uh, and, and provide a forum and a platform uh, for uh, countries to get together uh, physically when possible, virtually when uh, not possible, uh, and uh, uh, around a key set of topics. Uh, and what we have decided uh, more or less now is to focus uh, the work of the RKSI around some key areas that have been prioritized in our country partnership strategy for PRC. So areas such as climate change, environmental protection, elderly care and health management systems uh, are some areas, uh, for example, where uh, we uh, would like to see more knowledge uh, sharing happening. But this is not to say that we are restricting it to these areas. Uh, we know that there is a lot of demand, for example, in other DMCs about the Chinese experience of, uh, of uh, eliminating absolute poverty or extreme poverty and how that was done. And so we are uh, trying to promote uh, knowledge exchanges on those types uh, uh, you know, of topics and issues uh, as well, which are much broader, uh, uh, in, you know, in terms of their scope. Uh, currently, uh, we are, uh, uh, you know, in the process of uh, making some key reforms uh, in the RKSI program uh, to make it much more demand based, uh, to make it much more focused, uh, and to get better results uh, uh, from its various operations. Uh, but we are happy uh, to uh, talk in more detail uh, our, our offline, and, and also I'd refer you once again to the RKSI website uh, for more information. Thank you. Thank you so much, Saftar. So um, we will um, close this panel discussion. Um, once again, thank you so much, panelists, uh, for your valuable insights. Um, hopefully, this is just a start of the conversation, and then we hope to um, continue working together closely on this. Thank you. Thank you so much. So um, now we turn the floor to um, Ms. Teresa Ko, Director General of East Asia Department, to close this forum. Over to you, Teresa. Thank you, Akiko. At the onset, allow me to thank everyone for joining us in the past two days. I hope that you have found the sharing and discussions in this first ever East Asia Forum as enjoyable and insightful as I found them to be. Allow me to share some of the thoughts that I have gathered in the past two days. First, there is no real development unless we address the issue of climate change. The Asian Pacific region is responsible for around 50% of global greenhouse gas emissions. Added to this, the region has been experiencing a significant increase in the number, intensity, and impact of extreme weather conditions. As I said at the opening remarks, without decarbonization, our ambitious targets under the Paris Agreement will be far from our reach. Our future will be in an uncertain trajectory. Without urgent climate actions, our future growth could be severely affected and our current development gains reversed. Second, technology will increasingly become more important in the years to come. Cleaner and smarter technologies are needed in developing alternative sources of energy and reducing emissions from our day-to-day -day activities. More importantly, technology will play an important role in facilitating climate finance. We have seen the role of fintech in climate finance, and we expect to see fintech play a more prominent role in climate financing in the future. Third, climate finance will help accelerate the speed of decarbonization in the region. For us to achieve our Paris Agreement goal of limiting global warming to below two degrees centigrade, we must back our rhetoric with action. We have to drum up support to finance needed infrastructure and technology to mitigate and adapt to climate change. To do this, we need the private sector to supplement the limited resources in carbon financing. We also need to see the public sector, private companies, and international institutions work together and explore innovative sources of climate financing and back these with concrete resources. Fourth, an integrated approach that cuts across boundaries is needed to effectively promote decarbonization. Decarbonization will require 
a coordinated and integrated approach that involves various sectors and brings together stakeholders from various segments of society. We have seen from ADB's experience in the Beijing Tianjin Hebei region, how a multi-sector, multi-project, multi-year approach could help significantly reduce emissions and other pollutants and contribute to a more sustainable development. Lastly, let us not forget the agriculture sector as we design our climate response. While cities consume around 67 to 76% of global energy consumption and contribute 71 to 76% of carbon dioxide emissions, let us not forget that climate change has reduced global agriculture productivity by 21% since 1961. That food systems represent a third of total greenhouse gas emissions and are a major contributor to biodiversity loss, and that the increased frequency and intensity of climate-related disasters threaten not only the agriculture sector, but also our food security. Let us look at simple improvements in agriculture practices that help lessen the sector's vulnerability to climate change. Let us identify new technologies that support climate change adaptation. Let us reach out to farmers and train them in implementing innovative agriculture practices that contribute to decarbonization. Friends and colleagues, the path to a decarbonized Asia and the Pacific region is not an easy one. It requires resources, it requires our relentless energy and our concerted response. As we say in ADB, we cannot succeed in our decarbonization efforts alone. This, I would like to think, is the most important takeaway from this forum, that we must continue to talk to each other long after the forum has ended, that we must continue to learn from each other, and that we must continue to work together if we want to achieve that low carbon future. The One ADB Knowledge Working Group launched today is envisioned to do that. It is envisioned to bring together various departments and practices in ADB to discuss and share knowledge from our operations in the hope of replicating and innovating projects in other developing member countries. Through this, we hope to contribute to a sustainable low carbon future in the Asian Pacific region. As we end this forum and leave this virtual hall today, I hope that we will all continue the conversations that we have started in this forum and find ourselves rolling our sleeves and working with one another toward a decarbonized Asian Pacific region. Thank you very much for joining us during the last two days and have a wonderful afternoon ahead.